Most people think that you can just plug your Quest into a PC and you're good to go. But the truth is that if you're doing that, you are leaving a ton of performance and visual quality on the table. And in VR, every millisecond of latency, every dropped frame, and every blurry texture matters. What a lot of people don't realize is that the Quest can actually be one of the best PC VR headsets you'll ever own, but only if you know how to optimize it. In my experience, the difference between a default setup and a fully tuned setup is night and day. Smooth, sharp, almost latency-free gameplay versus stutters, lag, and poorly rendered graphics that make you want to peruse eBay for a used index. So today I'm breaking down the 10 most important things that I think you can do to optimize your Quest for PC VR. We'll start with the base that I think everyone should do, and then we'll move into some more advanced tweaks that only hardcore enthusiasts seem to be talking about. And if you stick with me until the end, I'm going to be sharing a few bonus tips that didn't quite make my list of 10, but they are definitely worth trying. And on top of all of that, we're launching a brand new giveaway today. And I'm going to tell you exactly how you can enter to win at the end of this video. So stick around. <laughs> Alrighty guys, welcome back to Fix My Oculus, the channel where we fix, repair, and test everything VR, and sometimes go a little bit overboard in the process. Let's dive in starting with the very first thing that you should do before you even start messing with the settings. Tip number one for optimizing your quest for PC VR is to start with benchmarking and monitoring tools. Before you change a single setting, you need to know how your Quest and your PC are actually performing. Otherwise, you're just kind of guessing. And in tech, guessing usually means wasted hours, frustration, and worse performance than when you started. Now, one of the easiest ways to measure performance is with tools built right into the platforms. For example, the Steam VR performance graph. It shows you how long it takes to render each frame in milliseconds. If you're at or below 11.1 .1 milliseconds, you're hitting 90 frames per second. Anything higher and your frame rate is starting to tank. The Oculus Debug tool lets you enable a performance heads-up display inside of your Quest, so you can see real-time stats like frame rate, latency, and even whether or not your bottleneck is your CPU, your GPU, or maybe your network. Virtual Desktop has its own performance overlay. It's perfect for checking whether your lag is caused by Wi-Fi issues or your PC is struggling to keep up. The point is this, before you touch bitrate, resolution, refresh rates, or spend a couple of minutes playing one of your usual VR games with these tools turned on, write down your baseline numbers. That way, when you start tweaking settings, you'll know if things are actually getting better or if they're getting worse. Most people skip this step, but it is the difference between blindly moving sliders around and actually dialing in the perfect setup for your system. Tip number two, keep your PC and headset software updated. This is another one of those really simple things, but it's a free win that a lot of people ignore. Out of date software is one of the biggest hidden causes of stutters, connection issues, and random crashes. Start with Windows updates. I know everyone hates them, but Microsoft pushes out patches all the time that affect USB drivers, Wi-Fi stability, Bluetooth quirks, and even how VR headsets interact with your system. Next, check your GPU drivers. NVIDIA and AMD constantly release optimizations for big VR titles. If you're running an RTX card, use GeForce Experience or the NVIDIA app, AMD users can jump into Adrenaline. Even if your drivers are only a month old, do not assume that they are up to date or that they're good enough. VR gains from fresh updates a lot more than most games. And make sure that you restart after every update, even if it doesn't ask you to. A clean restart clears cached processes and frees up resources. Now on the headset side, keep your Quest firmware up to date. Meta's updates often add a lot of hidden improvements to things like Air Link, unlock new resolution options, or squash performance killing bugs. And don't forget the Oculus Meta PC app. If that bridge software is outdated, you will run into artifacts, lag spikes, or connection failures, no matter how powerful your hardware is. Updates are not glamorous, but skipping them is like leaving free performance on the table. Five minutes of updating can save you hours of troubleshooting later on. Tip number three, put your PC on Ethernet. If you are using AirLink or virtual desktop, your network setup is just as important as your headset. The single biggest improvement that you can make, plug your PC directly into your router with an Ethernet cable. Wi-Fi on both ends might sound fine, but it adds latency and packet loss that shows up as stutters, blurry compression, or sudden disconnects. A wired PC to router connection ensures that your Quest has clean bandwidth to work with, and it doesn't need to be fancy. 
just a halfway decent ethernet cable. You will see an immediate difference, especially if you've ever had your quest freeze right as you were about to land a perfect headshot. Your PC VR session is only gonna be as strong as your weakest link. So don't let Wi-Fi on your PC side ruin the whole experience. Now let's talk about the headset side of the equation. Wireless PC VR, lives and dies by your router. Stick to a five gigahertz at minimum, and if you can, go Wi-Fi 6 or 6E. These are gonna give you much lower latency and higher bandwidth, which is essential for streaming VR at 90 hertz or above. If possible, dedicate a standalone router just for VR. ISP combo units just weren't built for this kind of nonstop high bandwidth traffic. A Wi-Fi 6 or 6E router wired straight to your PC is gonna give you the cleanest link possible. Also, choose your platform wisely. AirLink is met as built-in option with high max bit rates. Virtual desktop gives you much more flexibility, including AV1 codec support on the RTX 40 and 50 series GPUs, plus OpenXR compatibility. Both are very good, but the right choice is gonna depend a little bit on your hardware. Wireless PC VR only works as well as your network does. Wire your PC into a modern router and then pick the platform that best suits your setup. Okay, now we're gonna get into the juicy stuff. Tip number five, optimize your bit rate and codec settings. Now that your network is dialed in, it is time to squeeze every drop of visual quality out of the stream itself. The secret sauce here is bitrate and codec. In the Oculus Debug tool, turn off dynamic bitrate. By default, it fluctuates to keep things stable, but that means fast moving scenes like spinning around in Beat Saber will suddenly drop into a blurry mess. Instead, Set a manual bitrate. Start with something conservative like 200 megabits per second. If your Wi-Fi is really strong, raise it to 350 or 400. And here's a little hack. You can actually paste in values higher than 500. If your router and PC can handle it, that'll unlock crystal clear visuals that look shockingly close to native PC VR. Now, if you're running virtual desktop, the codec that you pick is gonna make a huge difference. For RTX 50 series cards, AV1 is the gold standard. Super efficient, razor sharp at lower bit rates. Older cards Cards, stick with H.264. It's more forgiving and handles higher stable bit rates. HEVC is more of a middle ground. It's more efficient than H.264, but not as widely supported. Think of bitrate as the water pipe between the PC and your headset. Too narrow and everything looks pixelated. Too wide for your system and it clogs and stutters. Your goal is to find the Goldilocks zone where the visuals stay sharp without choking your network. Tip number six, dial in render resolution and refresh rate. Resolution and refresh rate are the most obvious settings, but they're also the most misunderstood. Push them too high and your performance can crater. Too low and you're basically playing with blurry ski goggles. Here's a safe starting point in the Oculus PC app. Set your resolution scale around 0.7 or 0.8, and then set your refresh rate to 72 hertz. That baseline is gonna work even on modest gaming PCs. From there, gradually climb. Mid-range rigs can usually handle about 90 hertz with a resolution scale of 1.2 to 1.3. High-end rigs can push a lot further, but only if you're careful. And here's a small bonus tip. If you're using Steam VR, don't double scale. Pick one place to set the resolution. Otherwise, you're stacking multipliers and wondering why your frame rate fell off a cliff. A quick way to test this would be to fire up a demanding game like Half-Life Alex. If you can keep it smooth at higher settings, you're golden. If not, dial it back until you find the balance where visuals are sharp and the motion stays buttery smooth. My last two cents on this is to not chase big numbers for bragging rights. Smooth gameplay at 90 hertz will always feel better than a slideshow at 120. Tip number seven, leverage upscaling tools. This is one of the best tricks for squeezing extra frames out of your GPU without trashing the visuals. Upscaling has quietly become kind of the secret weapon for PC VR. If your game supports it, flip on DLSS, which is for NVIDIA GPUs or FSR for AMD. These are gonna let your game render at lower resolution internally and then sharpen the image with AI. It's kind of like asking your PC to draw fewer pixels, but then clean them up so they still look sharp. And the result of that is going to be more frames and smoother gameplay. But what if the game doesn't support DLSS or FSR? Well, that's where mods like OpenVR FSR come in. They apply the same concept to almost any VR game, even older ones. You won't always get the same quality boost as native DLSS, but for GPU heavy titles, it can be the difference between Stutter City and Silky 90 FPS. Think of it as just like putting your PC on a lighter workload. It's not working as hard, but the final product still looks really good. My last little comment on this is that upscaling is free performance on the table. If your GPU feels like it's struggling, let DLSS or FSR pick up that slack. Tip number eight, tune your PC 
for high performance. Even the best headset tweaks won't help if your PC is running in eco mode. You're gonna need your rig tuned to max performance. In the NVIDIA control panel, set power management mode to prefer maximum performance. Also change texture filtering to high performance. This keeps your GPU focused on pushing frames instead of trying to save power. Then go to Windows and switch your power plan to high performance as well. A shocking number of people are stuck on balanced mode without realizing their CPU is literally throttling itself. Another thing would be to try to shut down background clutter. Discord overlays, Chrome tabs, RGB software, hardware monitors, all of these things nibble away at resources that your GPU could be using for frames. Finally, last point, keep an eye on the thermals. If your CPU or GPU is running hot, they'll throttle and throttling equals dropped frames. Clean your fans, manage airflow, and keep your temperatures under control. Your PC is the engine that is driving everything. So keep it cool, keep it clean, and keep it in performance mode. You're gonna need it. Tip number nine. If you really wanna get everything out of your quest, experiment with things like SideQuest and more advanced tweaks. If you're the type who loves pushing boundaries, SideQuest unlocks some deeper tools that most people never touch. In SideQuest, you can do things like raise CPU and GPU levels beyond the stock defaults for more horsepower. You can tweak global texture sizes to sharpen visuals. You can experiment with higher refresh rates. 90 Hertz is probably the safe sweet spot, but if your rig can handle it, try 120. And you can use fixed foveated rendering. This is gonna lower the detail at the edges of your vision where you don't notice it as much and frees up GPU power for the center of your view. Not every tweak here will work on every system. Sometimes you're gonna get incredible results. Sometimes it'll break things, but that is kind of part of the fun. Think of it like overclocking your quests. It's higher risk, but it's also higher potential reward. All right, before we get into the final tip, I do wanna throw in a few bonus tricks. They didn't quite make my top 10, but if you're still watching, these are extras that I feel like could probably save you a ton of frustration. Bonus tip number one, don't mirror your headset view unless you're streaming. Mirroring forces your GPU to do double duty. It's got one render for your headset and another one going for your monitor. If you're not streaming and you're not recording, skip it. Let your GPU focus 100% on powering the headset and that should give you a smoother performance. Performance. Bonus tip number two, keep your play space well lit. A lot of tracking issues aren't your PC and they're not your headset. They're your room. The Quest's inside out cameras need clear, even lighting. Too dark and they can't see, too bright and the glare is gonna blind them. Keep your play space moderately lit and you will avoid most controller drift and hand tracking headaches before they even start. All right, let's wrap this list up with something that sounds simple, but can absolutely make or break your wired PCBR experience, the link cable. A lot of people just grab whatever USB-C cable they have lying around and plug it in. Technically, it might connect. But if the cable isn't up to spec, you're gonna run into slow speeds, random disconnects, or your headset draining battery halfway through the session. The official Metalink cable is kind of the gold standard in my opinion. It's fiber optic, which makes it lighter, more flexible, and immune to signal loss over long runs. The only real downside to it is that it's expensive, and on older motherboards, its USB-C requirement can cause some compatibility quirks. The good news is you don't have to spend top dollar to get reliable performance. There are plenty of other brands that that make high quality cables with inline charging. That means that you can plug in your Quest's wall charger to keep the headset battery topped up while you play. I've personally tested a lot of these cables and they do a pretty good job of keeping the battery life real solid 95, 100% even after hours of gaming. On the budget side, there's cables like the Kiwi cables that are well built and affordable, but the trade-off is, is that they will probably let the battery die while you're playing over long sessions. The bottom line is this, do not cheap out on your link cable if you're playing wired. Make sure that it's at least USB 3.0, five gigabytes per second, well shielded and preferably designed for VR. If you can afford it, go for fiber optic. If not, at least pick one with smart charging built in so that you're not forced to cut a session short while the battery dies. And this is kind of a personal note, but whatever you choose, pair it with a pulley or a cable management system of some kind. That little simple step is gonna keep the wire out of your way and it's gonna prevent you from doing something silly like tripping on it, yanking it out and damaging the port on your headset. I know, I've seen it happen, it happens all the time. Your link cable is like a lifeline between between the Quest and the PC, and a cheap charging cable might connect, but for PC VR, it's one of the fastest ways to ruin the whole experience. All right, that's it. Those are my 10 tips for optimizing the Quest for PC VR. If you've made it this far, then you are already ahead of most Quest owners because here's the truth, most people never touch their settings. They just accept the lag and the stutters and the blurry graphics as normal, but you, 
you've now got the tools to turn your Quest into one of the best PC VR headsets out there. And to celebrate that, we are kicking off something huge today. A brand new giveaway. I'm giving away this computer. We built this rig with a brand new AMD processor and an RTX 5070, and it is designed to crush some PC VR gaming. And one of you guys is actually gonna win it. At our last giveaway, actually, I had a poll where we asked what you guys wanted for the next giveaway, and overwhelmingly people said gaming PC, so. Here you go. Now, if you wanna get entered to win, I've got a link in the description below. You can click on that and you can enter to win a brand new gaming PC. And I know you're excited right now, but before you do that, if you already play PC VR with your Quest, let me know in the comments if there's something that works for you or if there's something that I missed that I probably should have included. And if this video helped you out, smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching the video. Good luck on the giveaway. And as always, we will see you on the next one.